Hey guys, so I have my 81 Corvette up with the uh, quick jack lift and as you can probably see I, I'm only using one lifting pad per corner instead of the uh, two per corner which would give me a little more height but because of how low the car is I cannot use two per corner and uh, still I have roughly 20 21 inches between the ground and the motor so I have the creeper ready to go and I'm gonna get under there bring the camera along for the trip and try to film some of that for you guys and if you happen to own one of these lifts or you borrow one make sure that the weight of the vehicle is properly supported by the safety bars instead of hydraulic pressure. This is very important and I encourage everyone who uses one of these to properly read the user's manual. This is very important. These cars weigh, I don't know, 3,200 pounds and trust me, you do not want 3,200 pounds resting on your chest. So be safe. And I'm under the vehicle and the first thing to do is to give it a, a good visual inspection. You want to look for major damage, things that are bent, torn, uh, dented. I don't see any of that. Just some wear and tear from, from use. That's nothing wrong with that. It's um, bushings look good. I don't see any major leaks. Uh, everything seems to be where it needs to be. The, um, the car of course, the, the engine uh, and, and chassis is going to need a, a good cleaning. But uh, I will do that a little later. And um, the fuel pump, that fitting there looks a little questionable so I may have to replace it. Yes, that appears to be leaking so that is uh, that is a no-no starter looks okay the exhaust man everything seems okay um, I don't see anything that jumps out and says you know wow I need to be fixed or anything like that the shield for the uh, wires spark plug wires right there seems to be okay I see a few cable ties not a big deal uh, you want to keep those spark plug wires uh, properly insulated and away from heat sources like the uh, exhaust manifolds that's the uh, brake proportioning line and up there is one thing that I have to remove which is someone had added a hood lock uh, in the past and I'm um, trying to uh, remove that there's no sense for for that being there um, yeah everything else is just dirty that's gonna be a little challenging but uh, that's part of the fun um, Z bar seems to be okay and again everything is gonna have to be lubed uh, I'm gonna check the uh, the oil again and uh, make sure that uh, that it's good. Otherwise, it's gonna get an oil change and filter. Um, yeah, hoses look good. And uh, here's the other shield motor mount. Here's the other side, the other uh, spark plug wire shield and the. Motor mounts are good. Yeah, everything is it's looking really, really good. I do not know if these cars were, uh, the oil pans were black or blue. I think they were blue, right? Someone comment about that. The uh, transmission seems to have a little leak that is not unusual. Usually the uh, shifter uh, shafts, uh, the O-rings rather, uh, give up the ghost and uh, you see little leaks there. I'm gonna make sure that the uh, the fluid level and the uh, plug everything is installed properly and the level is um, up where it needs to be. Um, 
Yeah, the exhaust seems a little questionable, but uh, I will deal with that later. At some point, it seems there was a coolant leak, but that is all dry, so. But yeah, all in all, it looks good. I don't like those motorcycle-like uh, fuel lines. That's a return line from the uh, pump, so it's not a big deal. But uh, all of that will be inspected when the time comes after everything is clean. A little damage there at the very tip of the nose. That is a vacuum tank that you see there for the headlamps. And uh, that's about it for the uh, quick visual inspection. So yeah, it's looking, it's looking good. Okay, so I couldn't really film under there. If I did take this thing off, I use a ratchet for a socket for that 516s. So no big deal. So now I think I think some all those cables are getting stuck in there. Yep, I'm trying to remove this stupid thing. They they head under there, there's a wire, which I already disconnected. This thing is getting caught. All right. So this is the uh, cable on this. Caught somewhere in here, yep. What a pain in the neck. There it comes. Okay. That wasn't too bad after all. So there's the tail end of that. All right. These flashlights, the rechargeable, these brawn Harbor Freight tools. Got me a couple of those a while back. Money well spent. Alrighty. There it is. A contraption. So. Alrighty. One little project out of the way. Well, it's been about a, a day or two, I guess. And so much for no leaks. I, um, I was under the cart today briefly. And the first thing I see is this, which of course means that the passenger side caliper started leaking. Not a big deal. Not an expensive repair. And frankly, it gives me a little extra content for another video in case one of you guys needs to uh, rebuild the calipers. So let's go under there and have a quick look. So there you see where the leak is coming from. And these are the obvious signs of a caliper leaking is the, uh, the rim is gonna show basically going to show you the trail where the uh, the leak is coming from. It's always going to be from, of course, from above. Going to go around the tire, end up on the floor. And uh, to properly inspect this, what I'm going to do next is remove the, uh, the wheel. You can probably see a little bit here where it appears to be very moist. Yep. And uh, again, this is not a big deal and it's something that happens. Uh, I don't know, he mentioned, the uh, seller mentioned that he had, I think, some work done 
I don't remember, it doesn't really matter. But this looks pretty clean, so I'm thinking maybe this is a new caliper and for whatever reason it's leaking. Most likely the uh, one of the O-rings, or not the O-rings, one of the seals, the umbrella seals. The other side The other side looks good and dry. So my philosophy when it comes to this is if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So I am still going to remove all the all the wheels because I want to have the tires uh, replaced and I'm going to have uh, then the opportunity to clean everything and make sure that everything is is good and there are no additional leaks but that is going to be part of the uh, the whole cleaning process uh, the undercarriage cleaning process so that is the latest update and again not a nothing worth writing home about I mean like I always tell people these old cars are never finished so if this happens to you don't get discouraged. This is something that for about, I don't know, twenty, thirty dollars you can uh, do in a few hours with some basic tools, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's probably going to be a, a separate video, and it's going to be just focusing on how to rebuild the uh, the caliper because it needs. Um, I need to show you step by by step how that is done. Delco. Okay. Why is it leaking? Who knows? We shall find out. Wow. Holy smokes. Oh well. So I guess this is a 564. three of them. Yeah, only two would have been odd.
I was thinking about ordering new center caps for the for the rims, but I kind of like these. These are very well made. So I am going to polish them and we'll see how they turn out. I mean, they look they look okay. The uh, they're pretty elaborate because the way that they're retained is with these little set uh, screws. There's three of them and that holds them in place and then you can actually put the uh, spinner on or so it stays in place but uh, so let me get started and of course I'm gonna be using my favorite aluminum polish and uh, we'll see how they how they look Oh yeah, I'm trying to, to make him look like Chrome even though you could. That is great. And these are just a little dirty. So a light polish is gonna really do wonders. Even I'll even polish the uh, center emblem here just to see if they pop a little more. So here we have a side by side These are really dirty. They clean up very nicely. And I also noticed these have provisions here for another set screw, which you can tighten from this position to keep someone from stealing your spinners. So again, I don't know how much you can tell the difference between the clean one and the dirty one, but uh, it is pretty, pretty cool. I even cleaned the inside a little bit. Since I was there. So, three more to go. I think these turned out beautiful. And they are very well made, pretty solid. So about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes of polishing a little elbow grease and we have a winner. And this is a very easy uh, procedure. All you need is a flathead screwdriver to release the, the cover. Make sure that everything is protected. You do not want uh, brake fluid on your paint. And make sure that it looks clean, that uh, there's plenty of it. And this one looks pretty okay for now. So. Then um, this thing was bugging me. There's a, this is a, I call them motorcycle fuel lines. I do not care for those things. This is not a motorcycle. We're talking about a Corvette. So my quick and easy um, fix was to dig through my stash of old vacuum hoses that I removed when I uh, replaced the, the vacuum lines on my 76. And I found um, a couple ones that uh, fit properly, cut them to size, and um, that's it. I also like to save these old uh, kind of spring clamps. Uh, they look good, they work very well, and they look OEM. So I use one of those to uh, secure that hose to the um, to that little valve there and that is the finished product it looks like it's supposed to I don't know if the uh, the red stripe was correct but it doesn't matter it just looks cool
and I am sure most of you guys know, know this old trick using two nuts to properly tighten uh, the air cleaner stud and again this is just kind of DIY 101 but uh, for those of you who are not familiar this is how you do it you use two nuts and you tighten them against each other and that gives you uh, a way to tighten that stud without resorting to um, vice grips or pliers or anything like that which can all, always damage either the threads or the uh, stud itself and that's what I'm doing here I'm make, making sure that they're, the nuts are tight against one another and then just use the same wrench to tighten the, the whole stud by uh, turning the, uh, the nut at the very top. You make them snug and, and that's it. And one thing that um, you have to keep in mind as you're removing the, uh, the nuts, make sure you don't drop them inside the uh, carburetor otherwise you're going to end up with a headache and a big project. So don't do that. And here I'm starting the process of removing the caliper. First thing I'm going to do is loosen the uh, flex hose. I'm going to keep that one uh, in place. Um, I don't want to deal with that uh, mangled nut. Someone was there before me and they, they did a number on it. So in order to remove that hose, I'm just going to use these... Um, whatever they're called, these line um, <laughs> pliers, I, I, I can't think of the name. I, they, they're really cheap and you can improvise, uh, use vice grips if you need to, but I, I like to have the right tools whenever possible. And here I'm loosening the, the two bolts that secure the caliper to the bracket. And uh, you need in order to, to uh, remove the caliper to make your life a lot easier just make sure that you remove if possible the uh, brake pads in this case I couldn't do it and I'm I wasn't gonna be fighting them so I figured once I remove the, the caliper they usually leave the building really fast as you will see in a second nothing nothing wrong with that I mean I had a catch pan under there and uh, that's where I also chose to uh, save the uh, the washers because they, you know, you're gonna drop stuff. I mean, it's uh, no matter how careful you are. And uh, once that is done, you can start removing the, the caliper. At this point, the flex hose is still connected. So, oh, and here comes one of the uh, brake pads. And again, you know, you don't want to be dropping them on the ground, but uh, the plastic. Uh, um, catch pan save the, the day and uh, now that's why I loosened that uh, that big nut first because it allows me to um, do this weird mechanics yoga routine here uh, it's not the uh, the best way to do this um, you want to always remove that hose if possible but again in this case it wasn't uh, it wasn't really an option don't forget that there's also a copper washer at attached to the, uh, to the hose and you want to remove it so in some cases you can reuse them by the way um, I sand them flat and they work just fine and here are the other uh, brake pads which I'm gonna clean uh, later and reuse there's nothing wrong with them they're just a little dirty and that's that's it the caliper I was hoping to uh, rebuild the thing and and do a video on, on how to do that replace the seals but uh, that was not possible this one as you will see in a second here um, it was shot The 
this is an excellent opportunity to try to remove or force out the uh, as much of the old um, brake fluid. It's it's going to be a messy job no matter what you do, but and you'll never get all that fluid out of there. But um, it's it helps a lot if if you get some of it or most of it out. Now to separate the two halves uh, of the caliper. It really helps a lot if you have an impact uh, gun. It's not 100% necessary, but it's highly advisable to have one. You can do it with um, conventional hand tools, but um, it is not a fun job. So you want to crack those things loose so you can separate the, um, the two halves. And again, there, there's still going to be some brake fluid in there. Um, so make sure that you're not wearing your Sunday um, clothes when you want to do this job. As you can see here, I'm still extracting some of that old dirty fluid. And, uh, and for whatever reason, it keeps on coming, you know. It's, um, it stays in there. When I remove the outer seals, I just use a flathead screwdriver. But they're not going to be reused, so I don't care. Uh, just be careful when you when you do that, not to scratch the, uh, the you know the, the bores or the sides to prevent any any leaks from happening. Uh, to remove the pistons, again, you have to wrestle with them a little bit. And this is the side of the uh, caliper that it was completely shot. And as you can see, there's still some dirty old fluid in there. So <laughs> you can you can see how it still squirts out. I uh, I spray myself with uh, with the stuff uh, 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 at least once, so um, it'll happen. And again, you can see by the color of the um, fluid and the um, that orangey it's uh, you know these uh, the pistons are fine it's just that the uh, the um, casting of the caliper was completely uh, beyond repair so you'll see that in a sec What a difference. So after taking the caliper completely apart and doing some cleaning, I realized that only half of the caliper was usable and rebuildable. The other half was beyond repair. There was, you couldn't do enough honing or sanding to bring those pores back to um, useful life. And uh, there was a lot of rust, as you can see here on the pistons. Literally, it was a mess. Even the um, outer seals were rusted, so I had to buy a new caliper. Okay, so I got a replacement caliper at the auto parts store. It's about 80, 87 bucks with the tax. They give me $30 for the 
for the core exchange so that's not too bad and this is supposed to be a direct fit according to the website and all of that it's look, looking good don't forget the uh, copper washer and that's what I call the uh, caliber aerobics it's a pain in the neck you want to get this started in here having someone to help you it's um, it's a good good thing to have but uh, I'm working alone as always I finally got these started Okay, so I got the new caliper installed. Everything is tightened and secure. And what I have to do next, start bleeding this, this caliper, get that done. And yeah, I couldn't film most of the stuff. It took a couple a couple of tries so if I ever redo the ones on my uh, 76 I'll try to film that but I just want to get finished with this project here so so far this is done 90% so alrighty let me uh, move on to the uh, the next step here. So the folks at Super Clean Brands sent me a few of their cleaning products to try. One of them is a wheel cleaner and they also included a couple of um, general purpose degreasers which will be great because I'm in the process of course of cleaning the underside of the vehicle so everything will be put to the test and they also included a baseball cap and a super clean t-shirt so thanks super clean so I decided to have my old BFGs off of my 76 bed uh, remounted for the time being anyway these tires are fine they're 10 years old but they they're not cracked I wouldn't necessarily take them on the highway but they're okay for city driving Honestly, I've been kind of dreading having to clean the, the wheels. As you can see, especially the front ones are beyond filthy. I mean, this is years of brake dust and, and dirt that is embedded into the, uh, into the aluminum. And uh, the rear wheels are not too bad, but uh, you can see corrosion and dirt. So um, let me give it a shot, see what happens. There is one thing that I wanted to mention and that is uh, the fact that most of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed to my channel and believe it or not this is from what I've heard I'm no expert uh, when people subscribe that helps um, YouTube 
recommend the uh, the videos and the channel to more um, potential subscribers and viewers so if you haven't subscribed and you feel that I've earned your subscription please take a, a moment and hit the subscribe button and also uh, the like whenever you find a video helpful that I think also helps um, for the for the videos to get distributed a little to a broader audience so anyway thank you so much uh, so far I am really impressed I uh, and I didn't think I was going to be able to remove even half of the uh, corrosion and dirt and uh, dust. And, I mean, this has been accumulating for years. Uh, I, um, I'm quite surprised. I'll bring you in in a sec. But uh, and I listen. I understand that using the uh, the 3M probably helps quite a bit. And I chose to do this in the garage because then I'll just kind of mop the floor. I didn't want to make a mess out of my driveway. And the stuff that is running off of this wheel, it is just nothing but rust. So, so far, I am very impressed with this uh, super clean, all wheel cleaner. This is beyond my expectations, so. Good stuff. I have to admit I wasn't expecting um, to get them this clean. This is pretty amazing. These are old wheels that have been used for years. So for them to, uh, to get this clean so fast boggles the mind. And yeah, I used uh, the 3M, which helped. I also used the brush to agitate all that gunk. But let me tell you, this is truly night and day. Are they perfect? Heck no. I mean, I can give it another scrubbing and I'm sure they will only get better. So, yeah, you're gonna have to use some elbow grease. There's no getting around that one. And, boy, that is amazing. Yeah, totally worth it. Alrighty, just because I am this involved in this project and I'm really happy with the results, I'm gonna use a little bit of 80 grit sandpaper to give it a, kind of like a once over, see if I can remove some of these things that are embedded in there. Oh okay, guys, so and before I forget, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but now I have a, a compressor. I forgot about that. So. So, there you have it. <laughs> words fail me here so let me get busy with this one and we'll make it look hopefully as good as this one wow This is going to be almost impossible to to film, but I'll do my best. Hope I, I don't damage my phone, but anyway, I'm going to spray this stuff, and I'll get the process started let it soak for 
a few minutes. They come back and uh, start wiping some of the stuff off with the uh, paper towel. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> ah, got a mouthful of that. Uh, it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. I don't know if you can tell the difference here. I hope the camera shows this well. This is just a plastic piece, which is part of the uh, front air dam. And I only clean, not intentionally, just by accident, a part of, a portion of it. And you can see the difference between this section and this one. I also detailed here the uh, core support, the, the bottom part of it, some uh, other plastic uh, piece here in just a, a few areas and uh, stuff works I'm telling you just don't inhale the stuff <laughs> because it'll make your throat itch but anyway I'm gonna have to continue doing <coughs> small <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have to continue doing small sections. And um, I'll bring you back in in a few and show you the progress. Well, I've been cleaning to the best of my ability. It is not an easy task. I really need to. Uh, a good lift, but I am doing the best I can with what I have. And this is actually cleaning up fairly well, and uh, but it's a slow process. And uh, the um, the super clean degreaser really gets the uh, the job done so again it depends on how much stuff there is of course and how much you can reach but um, I've done quite a bit and I'm pretty pretty happy with the results I still have to do that portion of the uh, air dam and I have, a couple of I have a couple of pounds of dirty paper towels to be disposed of. But yeah, this is, um, it is slow, but whatever um, I've done so far cleans up pretty, pretty well. So I'm just going to continue cleaning whatever I can reach here. And uh, I think it's worth the effort. And of course, you're going to end up with a mess on the floor. But whatever. You can always clean that up. And yeah, I can tell that they, they sprayed something under here either. Some kind of a protectant or something. I can see the. Uh, Chevy blue under under that black paint so I don't know what the uh, idea was maybe anti-corrosion I have no clue but whatever this overall is looking nice well let me show you while I'm under the vehicle one thing I found while I was cleaning around the uh, fuel pump and I think I mentioned earlier that that brass fitting is leaking. It's probably cracked, so I'm going to have to replace that one. That is not a big deal. The, they obviously try to stop some kind of a fuel leak, and I'm going to have to look into all of that. But the thing that uh, caught my eye, and this came uh, as a surprise to me, is the fact that someone replace the main fuel line 
going into the pump from the tank with the wrong uh, rubber hose. I mean, these are supposed to be molded hoses specifically made for these vehicles. And they use whatever they, um, they could find. And I don't know if you can tell there, but it's obviously kinked. What that's gonna do is gonna reduce the, uh, the fuel delivery, the proper amount of fuel going into the pump and then getting to the uh, carburetor and, and doing its thing. So, you know, it's upsetting if you take it to a mechanic and they don't know what the heck they're doing. They, they should stop. They should tell the, the customer, get the right parts or we're gonna order the right stuff. No, they, they just choose, oh, let's put this in and uh, hopefully it'll work. And I guess it worked a little bit, but um, no wonder the car was uh, running rough and, uh, you know, not properly. Oh, I'm not a mechanic. So again, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do the job yourself, the first thing is get the right parts. Don't just buy the first thing that, that you find because they have the wrong clamps there, which is not a big deal. But if you have the, the, the wrong hose, you're gonna have issues. And that's only one side that kind of has that bend. There's another one toward the top. So again, frustrating stuff that you find while you're um, looking and cleaning under these vehicles. Uh, poor workmanship, which is not acceptable. I mean, that is, that is really pathetic in my opinion so end of rant i just wanted to share that part with you and i'll have a video on how to install these things it's not easy but it's perfectly doable by the average do-it-yourselfer Yes, I went to my local O'Reilly's and I got this, actually it was a Delco for the driver's side uh, caliper and uh, it looks great. It's a little bit different, I, I, I guess on the, on the way it's um, made than the uh, Cardone that I got for the uh, right side. Anyway, I, um, I went to work immediately and I installed it. There was no issues and everything is connected properly. And uh, I am just um, gonna let them be until I get the whole system flushed. And uh, then I'll do the, the bleeding and uh, we're done with this project. Well, that's dirty. Oh my goodness, this is like a bad joke.
Oh, and it's leaking now. Good. So much more fun that way. This is so absurd. People do stupid stuff. Oh, oh my God. drain for a while but good night I want to know who did that <laughs> Lord. yeah I like to prime the oil filters before I reinstall them and uh, yeah I buy the uh, inexpensive kind because I change the oil every couple thousand miles as you can see this one got beat up but it was ready to be retired anyway Well, isn't this convenient? Oh well. As long as we're gonna get in there with a, yeah, with a funnel. All right. Great job, GM. Good job. Stop being sarcastic. I'll check it again in the future when the car is running. It's almost there, so that's plenty for now. try to bring you in here this is very difficult to see but anyway what I'm doing is some um, of course introducing fresh grease I use the uh, red and tacky I like that uh, type of grease 
And um, basically what you want to do is make sure that um, that boot down there, that's what you want to have full of the uh, fresh grease. And as you pump it in, some of the old stuff is going to come out. So basically what you're trying to do is, and you'll feel it under here, you'll start getting some of the old grease to come out. Ideally, you want to replace most of this old stuff, which is still in fairly okay condition, but you want to replace that with the fresh stuff. Let me give it a, a couple more pumps, see if we can get the uh, red and tacky to uh, come out of there. This just snaps in there. You can actually hear the uh, the boot getting full of fresh grease. Let's get this out of it, out of the way. And you want to remove the excess because it doesn't do you any good. You can see here your it's a little bit of waste, but um, again, once you get to this point, you've removed a big chunk of the uh, old stuff. And the reason I like to run my finger under there and. Uh, remove as much of the excess grease as possible. I don't want this stuff slinging under the vehicle, you know, once you uh, start moving. Again, it is one dirty job, but it is worth the, um, and the, you know, if you do this every so often, you will always have clean grease. One other thing that I consider important is to keep these clean as much as possible. And a while back I ordered a box of these caps from um, clipsandfasteners.com and uh, these come in a box of 50 grease fitting caps yellow you can get them i believe in other colors but if you're interested specifically on these the part number is fba 18111-50 and um they're pretty cool all you do is they have a little color here that keeps the thing from falling off and then you just clip it in place. Finally, I see some of the uh, fresh stuff coming out of there. And I think that's a good indicator that the boot is pretty much full of the uh, fresh stuff. And again, remove any excess because otherwise it's got to go somewhere. A little added insurance. And it looks good. Let's 
So as you can see here, the idler arm has a grease fitting. So we'll hit that one next. The pitman arm doesn't have one, but uh, I'm gonna keep looking under here. I'm sorry, it's just so tight. Um, the steering ram has a fitting right there. This one is can be a little controversial, I think, because some people tell you not to grease this one here for the uh, steering mechanism. I always give it a couple of squirts of um, fresh grease. And then you have the Z-Bar has another grease fitting. So you wanna make sure that you get that one. Alrighty, so I lubed, I think most of the stuff except for the uh, inner tie rods here. I, I cannot get to those, but um, that's only two and I can deal with those later. I got the uh, Z-Bar. So that one is taken care of. I hit this little valve here. It's part of the uh, steering ram. I hit it a couple of times. This one here, the other end of the uh, steering ram, whatever you call it. So, idler arm is done. So I think I only have one more ball joint to, um, to take care of. I'll do that next, but for the most part, we're done under here. And like I said, I, um, please comment if I have forgot some um, lube fitting. I think I got a ball. The, um, the drive shaft joints, they don't have any uh, grease fitting, so I'm not concerned about that. And I think most, all of them were up here up front. Ouch. And if I can get out of here, that would be great. And as you can see, this one is also taken care of. So, Good. This project is done. Thank God for that.